I couldn't resist coming back here and, and not messing with this. I wanted to see if this engine would turn over, and it does. Now, uh, you guys can hear, but it does seem like it's got compression, so that's a plus. I wonder if... Oh, the tail light won't work. Man. Well, I'll have to monkey with that sort of stuff, but... It does at least turn over, guys. So that's a plus. I think I remember... Well, there's hardly any oil in this thing. Okay. Well, I'll quit turning it over then. I thought there was oil in it. Maybe I'll go get some oil and put in it. And... Who knows, I just spun it dry for like 30 seconds. And I think the transmission, I think the transmission in this smelled like ATF. Yep, smells like ATF. Well, it looks like ATF. So, I have to drain that out. Of course, ATF in there is a lot better than having nothing in it. I have monkeyed. Well... I can't say I haven't monkeyed both of these. I've monkeyed about the same. I got the steering freed up. That's been about it. And it's later at night. It's almost it's close to 8 o'clock at night. So, you guys want to do the same deal here and see if... Whoops, whoops, whoops. This one here will turn over with the starter. I like the... The wing nut there. Huh. Yeah, I just need a good ground to put the bolt onto. Hope that'll work. See how much crap comes flying out at me. I had to sit up here because it's the only convenient location. I think it's turning. Alright, other than uh, the shroud hitting right here. See if that was enough to fix it. No. I'll have to pull the shroud off of this. I just want to hear if this thing has compression or not. So it does. Obviously it sounds pretty bad, but that's just the, the shroud hitting, I believe. So uh, it has compression too, it's at least pushing air. So, I will get these running at some point. This one, transmission has to come out to put PTO parts in it. But it won't be too bad since everything is... Uh, you don't really have to slide it out the whole way, but what are you going to do? Because basically, oh, that moves. High low moves. That's the forward and reverse. Yeah. Forward and reverse moves. And I got no, no idea where the axle, axle range is at, but both brakes are unhooked already. And the only thing I see that's hooked up is... Uh, I mean, that's just kind of their zip tied. The only thing that's hooked up is the throttle and choke cables, near as I can tell. Clips are still on them. Yeah, I know it's pretty dark. You guys probably couldn't see anything I just did, but... Anyhow, yeah, monkeying with them a little bit. And there's an extra spring here, I just noticed. That's probably the PTO spring. I bet you the shipper shaft or something broke on the other one. So, anyhow, I'll... I take this thing apart at some point and see if I got PTO parts. Maybe I'll go do that instead of. I know I'm not going to get it to run tonight. It's possible, but. Yeah. Another night. Throw the cover back on these. So uh, I couldn't resist tonight and I figured I would push the 424 in here. I didn't actually do it, but the tractors did it, but I don't know. 
It'd be nice if I could get this thing at least driving. But uh, like I said, I'm not going to hook the linkage up until I pull the transmission out. So you guys guess what the first bit of business will be. I should really buy two tubes and just put a tube in that tire and the other tire like it and take that tire off. This tire here will air up, but it goes flat within 24 hours anyhow. I'm not putting a lot of air in it, but just enough to move it around. And See, uh, she, what happened here, I did manage to, while I was pushing it in, I hit it. I had the wheel of the 16G up here and the hood, or the seat pan fell down and I kinked the hood, so I see how these get kinked like that. It's real easy. All it did was fall down and it smashed. Bent the rod up too. It actually kinked the rod over. Some rods really aren't meant. What I was actually doing with it is I took the 818 and lift hitch, picked up underneath of it, dropped a pin down through it, and then I just pushed it back up in here about like it is. And uh, that actually worked pretty good, comparatively speaking, to any other way I would have tried it. I think. So. Uh, Alright, next video or two we'll uh, pull the transmission out of this and see what we're missing and uh, go get the parts off uh, the parts transmission I have over there. And I found some shifter balls and I don't think I ever videoed the actual hood being on the tractor but there it is. I don't know, I have another hood in better shape and I'll just kind of play it by ear and see what I... See which one I like better there. Found shifter balls. I need a starter solenoid. Key switch is going to be junk because there's no key. I'll look on the trailer, but I don't remember it hanging on there. And it had a switch here for headlights, so somebody added that. It had a separate starter button. And it had a, a starter generator light. I haven't looked for voltage regulator yet. It's bolted behind the dash. Yeah, it must be bolted behind the dash because there's bolts in it. But anyhow, that's it for now. Look, there's a giant slug on that. Wonder if that's one of them poisonous things they were just talking about. Well, I hope not. Okay, let me see if I can get that off there, because that don't need to be in my shop. Alright guys, getting ready to pull the trans out of this. First thing I'm going to do is, i got the bolts out of the seat pan. I'm going to get rid of the seat that has <laughs> whatever growing in it. Uh, you can see all the moss growing out the side and everything, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take this outside, and uh, this seat will end up staying outside just because how nasty it is. This this is the original seat though, which is kind of kind of cool. I only have two other ones that have an original seat on it, so uh, I will keep the seat uh, maybe for a pattern if I ever get real froggy and start actually restoring something, but. Uh, this point in my life, eh, probably not if I didn't start on it already. So, uh, let me get this off of here and then I'll I'll show you guys what all you gotta do to drop these transmissions out. Alrighty, guys, with the seat pan out of the way, you can we can see everything here. Now, probably if you had two people, <laughs> one guy could uh, just slide the transmission back. And one guy could just hold up on the frame and then uh, you both come over here and put blocks under it or something. But, since Steve is a one-man army here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to block these front wheels so they can't roll back. And then uh, I'll get a jack and put underneath of it or I might get the jack and put under the back of the transmission so that way when I unbolt it it doesn't just fling up. I really need two jacks. Hmm. Interesting. I don't have any jack stands. I really don't do any work on any vehicles or anything. But uh, anyhow, once I figure out what I'm doing there exactly, I'll let you guys know. But as far as what holds these transmissions to the frame, the PO at some point has helped me out a lot here because everything is disconnected. All the linkages and everything. Whereas normally you would have to unhook like uh, this is the two speed axle linkage and over here is the uh, the high uh, high low range so all I really have to do is take out the bolts up front here there's one bolt here 
one on the other side there, which would be where the handlebars would go and walk behind. And there is two bolts up here, or two nuts, I'm sorry. If you guys can see them there. One right there, just one in the screen, and one right there underneath that other shift rod. And that's all <laughs> that holds these transmissions to these frames. It's actually kind of scary when you think about it. And I, I'm guessing they probably had problems with these early on. Actually, I think the later ones, the later ones, I think, actually use all four bolt holes in the front. From what I remember, I think. Because for all I was going to do, you could really uh, just take the top two bolts out, loosen these, and uh, like pick up on the rear of the engine and just like, you know, like bucket down in the front and slide the PTO plate out and you could look in there and work on it. But uh, I'm just going to take it out and the heck with it. I'm going to clean everything off and look at it here real close. Because it looks like, I swear it looks like somebody started cutting the frame right here. Is that a cut or a crack? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, right there is definitely, the frame definitely can use weld there. Uh, same on the other side here. Interesting. Did they start cutting it? I swear it looks like it's cut, guys. Right there and there. I swear somebody started cutting that. I don't know. But that's like the main, one of the main mounting points for the frame. So uh, I will definitely, definitely be welding that. Now that I saw it. And basically back here, this chunk of frame here is just, just for the seat pan that rest on. The seat pan risers. So... Okay, let me let me twiddle with these bolts and see how hard they were. The seat pan ones, I actually, this side over here I had to heat up. It probably would have broke loose with just the impact, but I was being a little cautious on the first one. You guys know if you break the first bolt, after that it's all downhill. So uh, you want to avoid breaking the first bolt at all costs. So let me... Let me start unbolting this and then uh, when I get... Get close to taking this transmission out. I'll let you guys know because I'm only obviously I can only roll it back a little bit. But uh, I'm gonna see if I can get that tire over there. Just take a little bit of air. I haven't used my big compressor on it yet. Um, I've only tried it with my the little battery powered one and my uh, 12 volt one. And thus far, it hasn't taken air. And pulling it around and stuff, I'm sure isn't helping a dry rotted tire. But uh, and Steve forgot to buy tubes at work today, or he could have put tubes in the tire except for Steve broke his bead breaker trying to take a truck tire off so uh yeah it's always something but back to you when I get so uh yeah I figured out what's up with that other tire as you can see it, this is where it sat on the bottom you can see the uh, rust followed by the giant dry rod hole <laughs> no wonder it's only here's my hand it's about as big as my uh, pointer finger so this other tire seems like it holds air, probably about like this one, it goes flat overnight, but uh, to do what I need to do here, that'll be plenty enough, so let me put that on, and all the lug nuts came out with my electric impact. I noticed these ones over here weren't tight, so I'm going to put that wheel on, and then I'll come over here and uh, just buzz them in once, and I'll get the transmission taken out.